I just practice it, you know, all by myself. You know how we do it. We're live. It is 11.54. Turn on some light. Digipower. Womp. There we go. And we're off and running. Today, we're going to talk about piston to valve clearance. And we're going to talk about something that's commonly misunderstood. <laughs> I'll give you an example. In the video that I put up on the flywheel stuff, the mere fact that I mentioned, hey, we used a flex plate. And for me, I was using the flex plate and the aluminum drive plate as a lightweight lightweight flywheel assembly. It was just made it easier and convenient. I didn't have to buy or machine up an aluminum flywheel to make it lighter. The flex plate was already there. We had it. It was cheap. It was a one test thing that we're going to do. So a lot of the stuff gets thrown away anyways. So, but the mere fact that I mentioned flex plate, everybody, well, not everybody, lots of people commented on the fact that, oh, but what, what happens when you hook a torque converter to it? I'm like, look, look, this is an automatic transmission thing. But because you mentioned flex plate, they immediately go to automatic transmission. That's how their brain is wired. And the same thing happens with when I mention when you compare a, and we have our poll up right now, which we're at hundred percent, which is awesome. Um, when we mention a dish piston versus a flat top piston. And because on the surface, this seems like it's logical. And this is the path that people's brain goes down. They go down the logic one, which is good. I mean, this is how you want people to behave. You want them to use some logic. But the problem is, and, and this is a problem with a lot of different things, is they get stuck on this path. And they only know, hey, look, I've 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 made my decision. I've hit that switch. Oh, yes, no. If you, a dish piston definitely has more piston to valve clearance because the dish is lower, the valve you know comes down and they're working all this out of the head. So I'm going down this path. And now, now that I've made this jump and my mind has said, okay, we're going down this path, nothing is going to deter me from this path. The simple act of them making up their mind to go down this path has strengthened their resolve. And so now it's much harder to try to teach them the reality of the situation. So the question is, in a factory LS, which one has more piston to valve clearance? The factory dish piston or the factory flat top piston? Well, and, and I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you this is the this is the thumbnail that I have up for the people that haven't seen it yet. Mm. Oh, there we go. Come on, come on. I don't know what you're doing, but we don't we don't want this anywhere. Okay, so this is the thumbnail. So you guys can see it. Okay, so this is a factory. This is a LY6 piston, has dual valve reliefs on it. The reason that that one has valve reliefs on it is because that the LY6 was originally a, a variable cam motor. So it ha, it swings the cam timing, so it needs extra relief. But <laughs> the answer to the poll is in that, is actually in that photo. And that's what I want to talk about. And this is why when you go down a path, don't be so rigid in your in your thinking. You could be wrong. There could be other circumstances that make something that you think is right actually not accurate. And here's the discussion. So if you take a look at that photo that I posted earlier, you can see the important thing here is normally when we think about a dish piston versus a flat top piston, the dish piston, there's a relief. And so it should provide more piston valve clearance. Seems totally logical. But if you notice in the photo that I put up that the valve relief actually overhangs the portion of the non-dish portion of that piston, like the outer ring of that, the valve relief overhangs that. So that's the flat top portion of the dish piston. So you have a flat section and then you have the dish, right? And on a flat top, all that's flat. So all that is, is at the same level. But the piston where it's going to, or the valve where it's going to hit the piston intersects both pistons at the same flat point. So what I'm getting at is, <laughs> the dish piston, the factory dish piston, doesn't change piston to valve clearance. There is no more piston to valve clearance. I mean, there is some in the dished area, but that's not where it's going to hit. It's going to hit in the flat top area. If you saw in the photo, you could see that the valve relief, the factory valve relief, and you can scroll back and see this or, or, or scan back if you're just joining this, you can see that 
with no valve relief on a flat top, you have a certain amount of piston to valve clearance. If you dish that, you'd think that you get more, but you don't because the valve relief overhangs the edge of the piston where it's essentially a flat top anyway. So there's no gain in piston to valve in valve piston piston to valve clearance when you have a dish piston versus a flat top piston. So this is why regardless of what piston you have in your factory combination, whether it's an LM7 or an LR4, um, in an LM7 and LR4, you would you would change the piston to valve clearance because of the stroke length, because of the acceleration um, to top dead center and away from top dead center because of the stroke length. That is something that would be different. All the other ones have the same stroke length except for the LS7, but the 5.3, the 6.0, 6.2 all have the same stroke length. And they all have the same compression height and all of that is the same. So whether you have a flat top or a dish piston in any of those other applications, a 5.3, a 6.0, a 6.2, whatever your piston is, it is essentially going to have the same piston to valve clearance. The other thing that can change, well, the piston design doesn't do that. The cylinder head that you use, an LS3 has a different piston drop. Uh, the rec port head has a distant, different piston drop than, or, or valve drop than the uh, lot of the cathedral port heads. And so that can change piston to valve clearance. <laughs> but the piston itself, whether it's dish or flat top, does not change piston to valve clearance because of where it hits. And so that's why this was kind of a trick question. <laughs> Let's see what people are talking about here. Does the factory dish piston increase piston to valve clearance? Yes, 42%, no, 58%. See, so now if we have that pole again, it should be 100% because it doesn't do that. Because like I said, it, it overhangs it. And that's a little bit of uh, information for people. And it's something that I get asked a lot. Hey, look, I've how much more piston valve clearance does, uh, does the LM7 have versus the L33? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> a loaded question. Um, it, the piston design didn't change anything. One of them has a flat top, one of them has a dish piston. That didn't change anything. They have two different cylinder heads on them, which that might change the valve drop on a 799 head. Also, the 799 head has a bigger valve, which could definitely change piston to valve clearance. But it's important to note when you're looking at all these things that you look at all of these things. You just don't go down the path and go, okay, I've decided that's it. Nothing's going to dissuade me. What if there's other information that somebody does a video on and provides you with information? Now you have to figure out, hey, look, I, I've learned something new today. Florida's in Washington, so everybody's in the house. Yep, no, because the valve usually hits on the brim of the dish. That's right. Car farm. Hey, you can't use a live stream as an excuse not to answer me when I turn your call. Did you call me back? I I thought I had my phone here. That's a trap question. Dish piston could use less clearance, all things being considered. Depends on the depth of the relief. Yeah, and, and this was this was assuming that they didn't have reliefs in them. Um, I was just showing that piston to, I like that it had a relief for the thumbnail. And the reason that I like that is because it shows where the relief is. And while, without having my magic removable parts that I have on that display motor, where we could actually show this, you can see where the valve hits the piston and it is pretty far over on that edge of the, of the piston. And we showed that in the piston to valve deal where I notched the head and notched the block. So if you haven't seen that, go take a look at that. That's, that's good stuff. I know, I know we're very tricky, right? Yeah, the rim of the piston isn't dished, so clearance is still an issue. Piston, piston dish should be used for reaching your desired compression ratio. Agreed. And and if you can, if you have a setup where you can choose between a dish piston and a flat top, you should choose a flat top. Um, you know, possibly unless you're running boost, then you only run like seven to one or six and a half to one or seven and a half to one. And obviously I'm being facetious. You just run boost with whatever thing that you have. But uh, a flat top piston motor is definitely going to make more if all of the other things are the same. It's going to have more compression. It's going to make more power than its dished cousin piston. And so, you know, try to have a, a flat top piston if you can, like the L33. So that makes me wonder if now, if we have a flat top, because this, this would make all the 799, 243 guys mad. So if we take an L33... And we run a, we run the 799 head on it, and we take that off, and then we put a 706 head on it, and then go well, it's a, it's a smaller head, it has smaller valve, smaller ports, flows less, but it has more compression. And I would argue that the bore size fits the 5.3 much better than the 243 head does. So then we'd have the people saying, oh, but you need to equalize the compression, all that yada yada yada, because that's all part of the deal. 
Could you do a video on an old school smog pump like the ones used on RVs for the big blocks? What what tests do you want to see on smog pumps? Vern, Richard, do you have have you or do you use Kometic MLS head gaskets? I have a lot on Honda stuff. Going from a 0.41 to a 0.27 head gasket, you're going to bring my compression up. Yeah, Vern, go to go to Wallace Racing. And you can plug in any thickness gasket number you want with your other information and see how much of a change that is. With different pistons installed, you could have a dome piston with more piston to valve clearance than stock. You could if you had a valve relief in it. Let's see here. So, yeah, Vern, you need to go to Wallace Racing. Why do the gopher... What do gopher snakes eat? Well, they eat everything that they can overpower. They eat lizards and frogs, other snakes, mice. Whenever I switch over, I always have snake stuff come up because that's one of my... That's my search history. Wallace Racing Displacement Calculator. No, we don't want that one. We want compression ratio, right? Okay, so we'll do an eight cylinder. We'll do a four inch orange bore. We'll do a three inch stroke. We'll do a 60 cc chamber. Our valve release, we'll keep that. We'll keep that. Gasket bore diameter. 406. So we got. Okay, so we got a 41 thousandths thick, and we have on our 41 thousandths thick, we have a 9.2 to 1. So let's change this to 27. Bore, 4 inch, stroke 3 inch, chamber 60, 6.6, 27. 9.54. So we changed it uh, three and a half tenths on the going from a 41 to a 27. But you can play with all that and, and it's fun. You should go to Wallace Racing to look at all of their stuff. Burns, what's up? Michael, what's going on? Wallace Racing has tons of good calculators. I know I go to that stuff all the time. including for their Pontiac stuff because they do have a lot of Pontiac stuff. Hey, you guys. That's right. Goonies. <laughs> Beach fighting bolts on the truck. Yeah. Also is my go-to for intake manifold design. <laughs> it, it is a rabbit hole. That's the problem. That's the problem with looking up anything like that is like you, you're like, okay, I'm going to go do this. And then <laughs> it's three hours later that I've been doing this. It's a lot. It is. Good afternoon. 5743. So that's it. That's what I'm saying. Dish piston on an LS anyway. If the dish piston is dished all the way out to the edge and the valve and the valve relief would intersect everything in the dish, then it will change it. But on the LS, that's not the case, at least on the pistons that we see on the factory ones. Tunnel Ram's always the answer. That's probably true. That's good. In fact, Freiberger just posted a thing on Facebook and probably Instagram too 
on the tunnel ram versus the short runner intake results. So that those are up. If you, if anybody's interested in that on, and they, and you guys follow him on Facebook or Instagram, he posted the photos of the big, the, I think it's a 671 might be an 871 roots blower on the tunnel ram that they ran and then running the blower on the regular blower manifold. And you can see the difference and runner length does this. We see this all the time and it works on a roots blower on a big block. It works on all of them. <laughs> we want to want to run it through the flow simulation. <laughs> That's another three hours. Each. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the more intricate you get, the, the more the time suck. I did a 289, ended up getting 136 PSI on all eight. I have the engine out. Would like to go to 160 plus. Thought about going to a hyper Keith Black plus 2.5. So why are you interested in the cranking compression so much? Are you thinking that, that are you associating, associating that with torque production or something? Does the factory dish piston increase piston valve clearance? 59% are saying no. Most modern intakes are basically folded over tunnel rams. Yeah, and the, I mean, modern intake manifolds are even beyond tunnel rams now because the runner lengths are much greater on these EFI intake manifolds the way that they have the package them and they use up all of the room and the runner lengths are a lot longer than a tunnel ram is usually, like a high ram is six and a half or seven inches factory runners are usually a lot longer than that because the RPM range where they want to make power is lower than where a tunnel ram would be tuned for. I reached out to two different sources for, um, the sandwich intercooler bricks between the, you know, sandwich for the high rams. We'll see if, see if either one of the guys from, I think it's tick performance and then sheer fabrication. See if either one of those guys would even just loan me one of those intercooler assemblies so that I could run some testing. Tom Demuse has one that he could send out, but I, I we're working on something else. So I just didn't want him shipping stuff back and forth. The, and the other intercoolers that those guys have are designed to work on the high ram. And he has one, this designed to put the Ford blowers on that. And so I wanted to have one that's designed to put a high ram lid on it. Cause then my, my plate can do that and he can make that, but I'm just trying to limit the amount of, if those guys already have something that's available, you know, it would be good. So Def, I can read the chat, but I have to watch Richard later with CC to get the, Oh, closed caption to get the most from Richard. <laughs> what I'm saying is not really important. Static compression ratio probably should be more focused on, but think more in terms of VE that will get you further. If you're and Vern, if you're going to buy pistons, could you? Oh, there are there already going to be thirty over. Okay, <laughs> you should just put a put more displacement in it. March racing, stupidest rule, dirt track sanctioning bodies ever had, cranking compression rule. <laughs> Boy, did I use that to my advantage. Yeah, that's not, that's an indicator. <laughs> um, that's that's a correlation and not a causal effect, which I'm sure you found out. That's the, that's the argument that people get into when I posted the thing where we ran the low compression 540 with the big 286 at 50 camshaft. You can't run that camshaft in there. It needs 12 and a half to one compression. I said, no, it doesn't. It still works. The cam opens the valves and closes the valves and does all the things it's supposed to. You add the compression because that camshaft is going to be soft down low and the compression can help bring that up. But whatever compression it's at, the camshaft works. And then if it's more compression, then you just add power everywhere. That's what happens. I do read lips, but not well. Cool. Kind of the modern intakes have long runners that flow well, but struggle with a wet intake charge. Can't flow much more than 175 wet shot before you start messing things up. Yeah, the, the distribution would be the problem for the for these things. 
especially some of them are pretty convoluted trying to get the, because the air really is just filling the common plenum back up. The air doesn't flow in from the thing all the way through to one runner. People want to envision that, but that's not really what's happening. But the nitrous in the fuel, that actually has to happen. The, the nitrous, the gaseous nitrous works pretty well. And you could fill in the common plenum like that. And, and some designs are much easier, like a high ram is, is pretty good for that. But a truck manifold on the LS side, not really good for that. And then getting the fuel to flow in and be equalized in all the cylinders is very, very difficult. Uh, Vern, is your... Hang on, let me, let me look at something here. We don't want that. Uh, Vern, did you say 289? Because your 289 shouldn't be a three inch stroke, right? It's a 287 stroke, or did you mean a 302? Because if it's a 302, then it would be it would not be a 289. It would be a 302. <laughs> Port stack injections always answered that does work really good, and it looks really cool. I I would argue that the stack injection, um, like. Crower or Hillborn or lots of other people have it make that stuff. I think that looks even better than the tunnel ram does. Have you ever tested air to water on an NA motor? No, but I could on the high ram. I, I don't think we're going to, you would have to, if you did that, you'd have to make sure that the transfer medium, the cooling of the, of the intercooler has to be below ambient because you're going to have a pressure drop across it. The place where I've seen it used successfully is when you have pressure on your NA motor, not from a turbo or a blower, but from vehicle speed. So at Bonneville, guys have set these up to cool the air. You know, when they're going 200 miles an hour and you have an opening in the front of the, of the motor or, or in the front of the body panel, you can have air ducted up in going into your motor. So you have pressurized air and you have cool air, which is a good combination. On that setup, it works pretty well. But you'd have to have enough charge cooling to overcome the inherent loss in going through the core, because there would be some. But it'd be interesting to see. Maybe a big enough core, that wouldn't be an issue. I could test one of these, one of these brick intercoolers on an NA one, see what happens. Richard, when you get back to the Magnum tests, would you like to try a set of Mopar Performance Magnum RT big valve heads? Uh, I don't want anybody shipping me things anymore really so much um, just because it's a pain to store it and, and get it back to them. Otherwise, that would be kind of cool. What I'd like to test maybe are um, uh, aluminum heads because they're less expensive to ship. Richard, has Joker said anything more about porting the Gen 5? They said that they would do it. I just need to send it to them. But I'm not going to send it to them until after I modify it because I want to put a big opening on it. I love the stuff in ITBs. Yeah, that's very, very cool. Oh, so Vern, yours isn't a 289. Yours is a 302 then, right? Hot enough weather or high enough altitude, I can see an air to water being somewhat helpful. Yeah, and, and actually... The way that we run things on the dyno, especially now that we're coming into winter <laughs> with the ambient air so cold, I don't think we would see anything on that kind of test. During the summer months, maybe we would see something. You know, the dyno is correcting um, for those for the change in ambient temperature, but we would get more of a cooling if it's a 100 degree ambient day, and then we could put 32 degree water in there and get charge cooling. Um, I, I, I'm interested in doing that test. I just don't know that we'll see anything on a 60 or 50 degree ambient day because we can't get much of a change. Richard, how do you prefer to adjust compression ratio with a big block Chevy piston cylinder head or head gasket? I don't ever adjust it. I don't change it from what it is. Unless that happens by, I don't want to say accident, but if I do a cylinder head swap, 
and it changes compression, then it changes compression. I don't seek out a static compression ratio when I'm building something other than to get it in a range. Like when I do big blocks, the 540 that I did came with a low compression because it was a power adder motor from the guys of Blueprint. Other motors that I put together, I usually make them in the 10, between 10 and 11 to one, let's say. And I do that not because I'm looking at the static compression ratio specifically, but because I know that that's going to work NA and it's going to make a reasonable amount of power. It's not going to make as much as 12 or 13 or 14 to one or whatever as a dedicated build, but it also allows me with good gas to run boost on that. So it could be kind of good for both of those applications. And that's what I normally do. But all of those things affect it, obviously. I don't like a really big uh, dome piston because I, don't, I think it hurts flame travel. So I would rather have, you know, going down toward a flat top or a small dome and then a small chamber head if I was going to an absolute thing. And then head gasket think this. I'm not looking at that for compression ratio so much as I am to make sure that I have the amount of piston to head clearance. Something really cool to see you try is camshaft overlap limitations for a marine engine running wet exhaust. Yeah, it's really hard for us to run wet exhaust on the dyno. It, it would make a mess in the back of the dyno. But I have run those wet exhausts, but not water through the exhaust, just uh, wet lined basically um, because they, they were aluminum. Um, I think that these were. Who makes those aluminum ones uh, that I had on that V drive? Um, old ones. Hard hardened marine, maybe. A good example of changing the compression on a big block test that I did, and it still added power, was putting the Brodex heads in place of the of the gen six heads because we went from 102 cc's to 120 or so. And the Brodex had still added power. They lost a little bit down low, but they still added power at the top because they flowed better. But you know, aluminum <laughs> loses a whole point of compression just because they're aluminum. That's not true. So don't quote me on that. Um, so that was an interesting test, but a big change in, you know, almost 20 cc's of change in chamber volume. 42%, 58% saying no, 42% yes. Yeah, I'm excited about porting the, so we're going to go over to live chat. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about porting that M90. I, I want to, I think that there are ways that I can make this thing run on the dyno and have it and have it show a big number, let's say, because you know I gotta I gotta now set the set the world record for M90 3800 painted red, you know, with this pulley, you know, world record. Richard, awesome on the M90 porting. Hopefully, between porting and modifying the opening, it will add enough power to silence the naysayers. Yeah, I don't see why we can't get, uh, you know, a 10 or 15% increase in airflow by doing both of that. Richard, is there a long runner cathedral port intake manifold? A longer runner cathedral port intake manifold than a, I don't know what a TRA is. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to finish that. Oh, a truck. Uh, yeah, the Holly, the dual runner dual plenum, dual throttle body cross ram thing that Holly does, I think is longer than that. And I actually made one that I have hidden away. Michael, they had spacers for the VR6 that was in a few thicknesses. Problem was it took two head gaskets and over 25 pounds. They would blow, but up to that 800 horsepower mark, they were solid. Yeah, John Causey adjusted the <laughs> the compression with um, head gaskets. 
well, I get, it was kind of a head gasket. It was it was a three hundred thousandths thick head gasket. <laughs> I'm more concerned with quench than I am with static compression. That's that should be the case, and I don't like domes unless I have to use them. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, that's I think that that's race engine builders typically go that way. the The real high performance stuff on the big blocks is going to be a small chamber. I think a dish makes a tiny difference, but nothing not noticeable. Well, the, as I said, special agent, the where the valve hits, it hits on the far edge of the piston on the flat top section of the dish piston anyway. So I, I put a photo up. So if you want to go back, you can take a look at that photo and see where the valve relief hits. Twin M90s definitely are in play. My 289 is out and I have a 79302 I can build and not care if I blow it up like the OG 289 engine. Yeah, you know what? Don't hurt the 289 engine. I have a three inch crank, HP rods, DDS pistons are swapping to the 302 out of the 289. Should I go to the 3250? If you want more torque, more stroke obviously is going to help that. Paint the blower Pontiac red. That's an extra 10 horsepower. I do have a red blower, a red uh, Gen 5 blower that somebody sent me. The one that I have is natural grease finish. <laughs> I, do, I should clean that. I definitely will probably hot see it or something. Looking for something for a 408 Marine engine that will never see 5,500. Take a look at the, take a look at that Holly test. It did really, really well. The problem is it's a dual throttle body, which can be problematic unless you're running them as drive by wire stuff. We did that with a super thick copper head gasket and firing dropped it a bit. Yeah, we, he did that so that he could, change the deck height <laughs> and then run an intake combination that he wanted to run, which is pretty cool because it, it needed to be the other thing he wanted to do is he didn't want it to be a short deck so that he could um, run the rod length that he wanted and the displacement. Cause I think that that he did that when maybe they were 410 inches. Okay, so if you like small dome pistons and 10 to 1 compression, do you like large CC heads or small CC for a 540 big block? Well, the displacement is going to kind of dictate what you're going to have to do with the how you're going to have to juggle the head and the and the dome size. Because there might not be a really small chamber head that you have to use you know, if you do, it might be really, really expensive. So you have to, you also have to adjust based on what's available. I still going to do a turbo Magnum. Yeah. A turbo 360. Got to be spot on for that after clamping it down. Yeah. Yeah. They were pretty <laughs> precise in their, in their machine work, but it was interesting. I, I, you know, I got to salute it because he, you know, he's thinking outside the box. Like dual throttle bodies, there was a mid-90s Chrysler V6 that came with dual throttle bodies, adapted it to the Fiero. Will it help it rev? I have an Edelbrock Thumper 221 roller cam. BI spring should go to 62 to 6,500. What, Vern, what are the specs on that 2221 roller cam? Do you, if you want it to rev, then smaller displacement is better. I thought you were wanting more torque down low. Rich, what's happening? The Crossfire or the Mercedes. That's right. It was the, wasn't that a supercharged version? That was kind of cool looking one. And it had the fancy Mercedes engine in it. So it was all high dollar and stuff. Rich, congratulations on the new baby. That's awesome. So are we at 54%, 46%? Let's see, I told you. It, it's a thing. <laughs> Your 
put your snowmobile one two throttle cable adapter to fix the dual throttle issue if you just went off a triple for a g10 itb okay cool well if you got that set up then that that's the manifold to use that one made more than the truck down low and then more than the truck up top too amg engine compressor <laughs> number five wow you have been busy right 289 302 so that's the duration that's the advertised duration right what's the duration at 50 that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty good size that's big enough where you should have the extra stroke in it richard what's your favorite no pro <laughs> Uh, um, I got to see a lot of new ones for me when I went to Florida. My goal was to catch like a, you know, 10, 15 or 20 even foot, uh, Burmese Python when I was in Florida. That's what we were hoping for. I caught a four footer and, and actually I'm over measuring cause it was probably less than four feet. Um, my buddy Jimmy says that's closer to three feet, not four feet. I said, I don't ruin it for me. Um, but we got to see an Eastern Diamondback, which was cool. I got to see a rat snake, which I don't ever see any of those. We don't have those in California. We have gopher snakes, which is a very similar thing. Um, king snakes and stuff. Lots of water moccasins there. Garter snakes, which we have everywhere. Um, what else? Uh, the water snakes there. We have water snakes here, but not the same kind. So it was cool to see that. Um, uh, like I said, I, I would like to see a big Eastern Diamondback. That would be awesome. Like a six footer or something. That would be very cool. But I, I, I keep I want to keep going back to Florida until I find something big. Like I, it's got to be above 10 feet. Would a single GT45 be good for a 360? For a 360 Magnum, it would definitely be good for that. Because that's not going to make very much power uh, NA. Ever test the same compression, but one with the, the the dish dome kind of thing? I haven't done that. And I think that where that would come into play is the same place we have on a lot of our, you know, when we talk about our esoteric stuff, that in the range that we're talking about for street and strip, most of these motors, I don't think that's really an issue. When when people are doing it as absolute things, NASCAR, the super, what are the super touring? Is that what, what is the stuff in Australia? Um, or, or Formula One or India, any of the higher levels of things that 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 would become more. Those kinds of things would be more critical. <laughs> That's right. Hold the flashlight. Let's see. An iron block 416 NA found nice 821 heads. Those are good. 40,000 miles fresh off a running 2010 Camaro. Plan was to clean and spec, replace valve springs and seals. Is the valve job really necessary? Probably not at 40,000 miles, considering the fact that we put stuff that's several hundred thousand miles on there. Sometimes I hit them on the, we'll do part of the razor blade rebuild. So I'll clean all the valve heads off on a, a wire wheel, <laughs> you know, cause, cause you do. And then sometimes I'll do the razor blade re rebuild where we use this lapping compound and lap it in just to make sure that it's all hitting, but, and that works, but otherwise, you know, that's all stuff I can do myself. <laughs> it's only one kind of snake, a copperhead, copperhead rattle moccasin. Yep. I, I would like to see a um, a copperhead. I have. We, I was disappointed that I didn't get to see one of those. Jimmy has some by his house, and I, I looked around for them because I haven't seen one of those. So, and they're beautiful. Especially the snakes are really, really striking. After right after they've done a shed, that's when they get rid of all of the old skin, and then all it's they're all shiny and new, like they're, they're all dressed up. Come to Oklahoma. We have rattlesnake festival every year, and yes, six or seven foot rattlers aren't uncommon. Yeah, six or seven foot rattlesnake it would be a world record. So, you know, <laughs> especially um, in Oklahoma, those are probably going to be Western Diamondbacks. 
I don't know if does Oklahoma, I don't know if Oklahoma has Eastern Diamondbacks. Eastern Diamondbacks get that big. They get bigger than Western Diamondbacks, but that's that's a really big snake. Any luck getting 8.1 heads and takes from Larry Hoffer at Radar? But no, but I got some from somebody else. V8 Supercars, that's what it is. That's what I was trying to think of. I like those. Those are cool. <laughs> Uh, Rich, I'd hold my daughter by her legs and dip her in to get bolts <laughs> started. No wonder she quit racing. <laughs> That's an extension, right? I will notice a lot more interest in the 8.1s and 8.8s. But they're cool. I think that the 8.8 .8 has a different intake manifold on it, so I'm kind of interested in trying that. Western Diamondbacks in Texas. Yeah, that's it. We don't even have Western Diamondbacks in California very much, except for the very southern tip. A lot that goes into Arizona and New Mexico and, and Texas, obviously. So we see them. I, I have to go down to the down below, you know, down in the San Diego area, even even down past West Tech. They probably have a Western Diamondbacks down there, but we don't have them really in Northern California. 2.8.8s on building. We should talk. And I have and I have one of the which a lot of people are looking for because they're not making them anymore. I have one of the Dart um, 8.1 intake manifolds. I have that modified intake that Amos Garcia did for me, um, and I'll send that back to him as soon as, as soon as we're done. But I'm going to run it with a turbo and make a big number. You have the dark intake too. Yeah. I want to run that because the West tech has big block headers with eight Oh twos. I kind of run, want to run that with eight Oh twos. And I kind of would like to do that on the blower. I think I will ask them if I can do that when I run the LS again with the M 90 and the high Ram, because the discharge is over basically four of the holes in the high Ram. And I'd like to see if we have une uneven fuel distribution. And then if we do, I can go in and tune that. But if we have some lean ones, we could find out what's going on. Saw a rattlesnake go hiking the hills outside of LA. Not sure what kind it was. It was about three feet long, just cruising on the trail. Yeah, the rattlesnakes are all over. When I go looking for snakes, I catch more rattlesnakes than than anything else, than all of the other ones combined. So I, if I, on a, on a year where I would go out and actually actively look for them up in the hills and stuff, I might catch a hundred to 110 snakes, 70 or 80% of those are going to be rattlesnakes. And they're all going to be here in this area. They're all going to be what's called a Western, or I think it's a Northern Pacific, um, rattlesnake and they're small they're they can get three four feet normally they, they might get a little bigger than that but i've never seen one that's bigger than that but that's kind of all where they are in terms of size and you know i don't play with them too much because they're they're not that fun <laughs> because the other snakes king snakes and gopher snakes and things and we have sharp tails and garter snakes and racers and things but when you pick them up, they, they can sometimes be a little bitey to begin with, but then they're okay. Then, then, then they're like, oh, the, this guy's chill. He's not going to hurt me. It's all good. And then they'll, then they'll let you ha hold them and stuff. But I don't, ever, I don't ever try that with a rattlesnake. I've never had one calm down enough to where I thought, oh, this guy likes me. He, he will be fine with me just holding him. The dart intake won't fit the late 8.8 eight, eight blocks due to block rails like the LSF. Okay. This guy local to me with a 3800 supercharger in his F body. It's an interesting setup. He had to cut the throttle body neck off the blower for clearance and weld up a U pipe so the throttle body faces the front of the car. Yeah, I was wondering how he did it because otherwise on an F body it would be back underneath stuff and that that would kind of be problematic. He could put a you know a cow hood or a cow scoop on it, but that's normally what it is. They'll go over the top or then around to one of the sides. I was looking for specs on the 862, 863 heads. The L7 has our 360, but don't fit much. Sound about right. An 862 head is a 706 head. So 
330 CFM would be a wildly ported big valve version of that head. Back to work, Rich. I'm going to go ahead and because we're going to close out our poll at 47% saying yes, 53%. So it's actually trending more toward 50-50. So all the people that are voted yes on the factory LS stuff, it doesn't change piston to valve clearance, just so you know. Western and timber rattles here in Texas, copperheads, cotton mouse, corals, probably others I forgot. Coral snakes would be really rare. They're they're hard to find, and I, I'd like to see them because they're they're beautiful. Um, and they're a rear fang one, so they're they're not as problematic as the rattlesnakes are. But I again I would not play with those just because the consequences are a little bit too high. But they are cool though. Coral snakes are usually hidden and a lot of times um, underground. By the way, I just caught a rouse like hatchling. I'm letting him go in my backyard to take care of my mice problem. That's good. So just what Travis, just one little button on him. That's what the Eastern Diamondback was. It was a new, uh, it, it was a recent hatch, probably the one that we saw, but they're beautiful. The one that we saw in, uh, it, was, it was less than a year old, I'm sure. The one that we saw in Florida on the road. All of the snakes out just munching on the frogs that are all over the place. Yeah, you have to go out. I, I I get that all the time from people if somebody brings up that I because I don't talk to a lot of people about that. That's you know, it's a lot, it's like regular people. I don't talk to them about cars, I don't tell them what I do and stuff. But the with the snakes, it's even weirder because you'll get people that are, oh yeah, we don't we don't have any snakes around here. We don't have any rattlesnakes around here. I'm like, oh you 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 most certainly do. You're not seeing them. Oh, I've walked up there all the time. I never see one. I said, I guarantee you that they're there. You may not have ever intersected, you know, the the time in the area. You, you your vector may not have intersected theirs. I said, but they're there, and I have to go out and look for them. I go out and lift up logs and rocks and and you know boards and things like that to find them. I said, but they are definitely there. So you you want to be watching. I don't handle rattlesnakes, but this is the first one I've had try to strike at me. They are, and baby ones too, they're very defensive. So if something big is trying to get at them, they will definitely defend themselves. Most of the time they don't actually get mad. No, the what they want to do, their first inclination is to escape. And if they can't, if you've position them so that they can't escape, then defense is the next thing. They, they, they don't want to be eaten and everything out there tries to eat them. Grew up on the Mississippi, moccasins and copperheads are around. Yeah. And, and copperheads are more, even more than rattlesnakes, which I was surprised to read this, that um, copperheads are, are responsible for way more bites. But they're not as their venom isn't as strong as the rattlesnake stuff is, though. The 78 of asking for liquid nitrogen. Yeah, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Always avoid snakes, but I eat them because they taste like chicken. Yeah, the the problem with the liquid nitrogen thing is it's gonna be very difficult to do because of the outgassing, which can be deadly. It's not that's part of it won't be too much of a problem, I don't think. Gopher snakes are always the most mean. That's why they're your favorite. So much energy. They do. The gopher snakes can be kind of bitey. And they mim they're they mimics too. So they mimic rattlesnakes. They look like a lot of rattlesnakes. They look like rattlesnakes a lot, which tends to get them killed, unfortunately. But they will rattle their tail. If they can rattle their tail in leaves or anything, it actually sounds like a rattlesnake. Um, they triangulate their head. They puff up. They they get in their little S stance and they raise their head up and they, and they, they, are, they will strike. But gopher snakes are really cool because... After you get past that phase, and it doesn't take very long where you handle them, then they're like really chill. Then they're like, oh, okay, this guy's cool. His hand's warm and, you know, they, they like that. And then the time of day also when you catch them or the time of year, when it's cooler, the snakes are chill. If they're out when it's hot, which is rare, but then they're grumpy.
Uh, bull snakes. Bull snakes is like a gopher snake. Yep. <laughs> and and the hiss. That's right of the gopher snakes. Yep. They will. They will do that. Merge an air air cooler and a bucket of liquid nitrogen. That well, my my original thought was to make a flat trough and put the air to air down in there and have the end tanks come up out of the trough. And that could probably be done, but as you pour the liquid nitrogen in, it's gonna outgas. Tophius Cantifer is the name of the sound that they make. Cool. <laughs> I get grumpy in the heat too. Yeah, that's the thing. I also get grumpy if people try to poke me with sticks. <laughs> Would make me want to bite people too. Close that out. So... Seeing water moccasins chase people. Mm, see, that's the thing. I I don't agree with that. A, a water moccasin doesn't come after people because uh, you're you are not a prey item, and so it, it just would happen to be going in the same direction as somebody else. Why would anyone go for snakes? I I took a special trip down to Florida just so that I could wade through the swamps to try to find a Burmese python. For me, it's that's my jams. A bill was proposed for a big island and a reservoir for me for a release of snakes, but it was voted down. Local side of concern over snakes swimming off the island. Snakes are really good swimmers. All snakes are really good swimmers. <laughs> I remember when we were when I was little, there, there was a guy that caught a rattlesnake and he said, oh, I'm gonna kill this thing. And he threw it out into the water. I'm like, you are a knucklehead. I said, watch what happens. And he just screws over the side and said, Thanks, dude. Later. They're really good swimmers. And they will swim, they will swim uh to cool off. They they will thermal regulate in water. They will also go down to water to hunt prey. Cause there's lots of stuff there where the water is, is where stuff is. There are frogs down there, mice, things going down, lizards going down there, everything going down there to drink other kinds of snakes. And so they will dig that. And if, and if there's not enough prey on the Island, they will definitely leave the Island and go find prey somewhere else. <laughs> Why would anybody go for snakes? I get it. I, that, that went right over my head, I have to admit. Natural methane stock 5-3 test in the cards. I do want to do that. I actually I want to do the what I want to do the liquid nitrogen. I've been talking to Mohovitz about that because he has a source where he, he uses liquid nitrogen when he does um valve seats in the modular Ford race motors that he builds. So this was I don't I don't know. 10 or more years ago. And I thought, you know, that'd be really good for her. it. W I need to do that. I need to do a, a, an air to water intercooler with that. He goes, yeah, it's, that's going to be a little trickier than you think. I said, no, we just pump it through the air to water intercooler. He goes, eh, no, that's not really going to work. That's going to freeze the pump. You're That's going to be a problem. And then, so it just evolved into all of these things where, what if I just set the co cooler in there and just pour stuff on it and then fill it up? I, my idea was to fill it up in a bath of this thing so that the thing was submerged, but and then I realize how much liquid nitrogen that is. And the fact that as soon as you pour it out and, it, and it, it's going to react with the, with the ambient air temperature and want to be a gas. What is a Burmese or reticulated for pythons that you're looking for? We were looking for Burmese. Reticulated pythons, I don't think you're going to see too many of those in there. They may have some because some of them may have escaped and, and some of them may have been released as pets because that's part of the problem. But primarily the Burmese pythons are the ones that are there. And, and I'm told also, and I didn't know this until after I went there and started doing more studying, 
Um, Indian pythons also relative of the Burmese. And now that they think that they're, uh, they're, there might be inbreeding between those two or crossbreeding between those two, and there might be hybrids because apparently they're close enough that that can happen. But any kind of big python, a reticulated python would be good to find too, as, as long as it wasn't 25 or 30 feet, unless I had lots of people with me. Because those are, those are big. Those can get very big. Richard, what do you know about the first gen Camaro that runs off of a compressed air as a power adder? We tested that at West Tech. The compressed air supercharger guys came and tested that, and, and it's amazing. And it works really, really well. And it and it increased the power output by 100% at seven or eight pounds because the charge air was below, was below zero. So it works really, really well. The downside is because you're doing all the compression and everything off-site away from the motor, and then you have big cylinders, and then you have a uh, valve and controllers and stuff that make all this work. But you have to have big, you know, big amounts of compressed air. It works good for a drag race thing, and they did that, and it was amazing. Um, but like everything, that you know, there are downsides to it. I thought it was really, really cool, especially with the, the change in power relative to boost. Let's see. My girlfriend loves cars way more than her older brother. <laughs> I know bows are not the problem, but people kill them also, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I haven't heard anything about boas being out there, but I'm, like I said, the, when the, I think it was Hurricane Andrew came and destroyed the warehouse that released most of these things. I'm sure there are lots of things. I mean, there are iguanas there. There, I think that they're finding uh, monitor lizards there as well. Well, hunting, we were careful where to step but never have been chased by a copperhead or a moccasin scared the heck out of me when you're swimming though. Yeah, that would, you would not want to see that while you're swimming because they will come to, you know, I've had people say, Oh, they, they chased our boat. No, they were coming to your canoe or whatever you were in because they want to get up out of the water to you, to them. That's just a log or whatever. They don't know that people are in there and that people are scared. Uh, I'm not cool with snakes. Isn't the snake population in Florida out of control? Yeah, not not the snake population, but the Burmese python population, because that's an that's an invasive species and it shouldn't be there. But it's like a paradise for them because it's swampy and water and has lots of things to eat and it's warm. It has all the things that that particular snake needs. And also, the only other predator that would eat that snake. I mean, some things will eat them when they're little. But once they get to a certain size, gators would be the only thing that would eat snakes. And then after the snakes get big enough, it'd have to be a good sized gator to take down one of those things. Is yes, compressed air more stable than a nitrous tuned at the same power? Yes, you can get a lot more power from compressed air supercharging than you can from nitrous. Python's way cool. Pythons are cool. Even the, and I can see how the, the difference in the, even the small python compared to the other snakes that I caught were dramatically different. It, it was definitely a, a serious predator. <laughs> it's funny how the pythons and gators eat each other, whoever's bigger. That's the way that it is. And that, it's the way that way with snakes too. Cause the funny thing is a snake eating another snake is a very natural thing. Cause it, a, a smaller snake is a perfect snake size meal for another snake. I mean, it's, it's shaped right and everything It's perfect. And, and, you know, it isn't, it, the story is that we get, you know, king snakes eat rattlesnakes, but the reality is lots of different snakes will eat rattlesnakes and, uh, and other snakes too. Cause a king snake won't just, it doesn't just want rattlesnakes. It, it eats 
all all other snakes. Anything basically, snakes will eat almost anything that they can overpower without hurting themselves. Um, and then if they can eat it, they'll eat it. And one more minute. Your snake is an egg eater? That's rare. Do a nitrous test and replace the nitrous with O2. You don't want to run just pure oxygen because that's pretty volatile. <laughs> yeah, brother. That's right. That's the whole Kogan. Your car says something about the person that's expression of oneself. You, you think that that's true? So is my expression Chevy Sprint Turbo or is it Ford GT or Ferrari or is it beat up old truck? I'm very diverse. Rex, thanks for coming, man. So I'm working on the 3,800 and 4.8 liter video. So I got to get going on that. Thank you guys all for showing up and I will try to be back tonight. Today was a good snake day. Bam, 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 bam.